Hey everybody, welcome to Breakfast All Day. It's Alonzo, Christy, and Matt. Disney Nature is back for their, I guess it's what, every Earth Day? Is that how this works? Pretty much. Yeah, uh, with this year's installation, Penguins, which I have not seen, but these guys have. Matt. Uh, installment. What did I say? Installation. installation. Oh, well, yeah, it's at a museum. And <laughs> <laughs> They've installed four penguins. standing there. Uh, so, uh, Steve is a five-year-old penguin uh, who is on the cusp of penguin manhood. <laughs> Uh, is late to the singles party, uh, setting up his nest, uh, and struggles and wants to find a mate and raise some kids. And holy mackerel, it is cold <laughs> down in the Antarctic. Uh, <laughs> and we see the adventures of Steve. Um, that's pretty cute. It's basically 76 minutes of adorable penguins waddling across Antarctica right. in IMAX. Right, narrated. Like, by Ed Helms. By Ed Helms. Right, so these Disney nature movies, I, I believe I have reviewed every single one of them at this point. I know I have seen every single one of them. And increasingly, you know, from the from the beginning, they were all about, like, the awe-inspiring visuals. Sorry about that. And, uh, and they allowed that to be the basis of the storytelling. And increasingly there has been this right. super cutesy anthropomorphizing of the animals where you get names and backstories and human characteristics and motivations which have been glommed on to these animals to make them and their stories seem more palatable for the very young viewers. It, it gets really annoying at times. Like in Monkey Kingdom a few years back, uh, they legit staged an entire birthday party in a classroom just to have the wacky little monkeys come in and pop the balloons and fling frosting at each other, which is annoying because, you know, the animals are interesting right. enough in and of themselves right. without having to contrive antics for them. So here, yeah, you do have a character named Steve and he just happens to be adorably bumbling and clumsy. Like the, the first time well, we see him. Well, not more so than every other Adelaide penguin. Adele? Adele. Ad sorry. Adelaide is the. Adeline is, is his wife. Adeline is his wife. I'm sorry. sorry. Adele life, penguins. Life partner. They don't actually get married, but there is no, a No, no, no. There's a little penguin pastor. They're living in sin. <laughs> there's a little penguin priest. But they, but they are monogamous. They mate for life. So they they go apart for several months and then they come back and they find each other again. So it's it's a happy story of monogamy from Disney. Um, but with Steve, the first time you see him, he's like late. He's always right. running late. He's always getting lost. He's always wandering off on his own. He's always finding himself in impossible danger from right. a leopard seal or a killer whale. And I'm thinking to myself, N there's no way this one penguin is so adorably clueless and clumsy. Is it the same Steve the whole time? Like, I don't I, think so. I was scrutinizing every little yeah, detail of I, his flippers. Yeah, I started watching like the feather pattern mm, and the markings. The markings. And, <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'd be shocked to find out it actually was the same penguin. I think mm -hmm. they've what they've really done is they've cut together, you know, they took what they had and they made a story around it, which, look, that's fair game. Go ahead. <laughs> um, you know, if you're raising money to help, you know, with uh, environmental causes and that's what it takes to get people, sure, fine. Because um, right, every ticket you buy for right. these movies goes toward the World Wildlife Fund a little bit. Yeah, so, Various you know, groups. look, like once once Ed Helms comes in and, and says, this is Steve, like, <laughs> I mean, at that point, like, yeah, right. Like, this parent, this penguin parents, like, well, we're going to call this little egg Steve. They all get fake names. Um, yeah. So so Steve is adorable. And so Ed Helms not only narrates and, you know, doles out little tidbits of info. I mean, it's he low, it's low kinda, on science, but he's also like providing the internal voice of Steve right. as he's like, hmm, let's see, what do we have here? Oh, gosh. And, right. and it's cute. It's cute because, you know, it's Ed Helms is so right. likable. He's got that likable everyman thing. And so in spite of myself, you know, I had a right. giant smile on my face the entire time because it's penguins yeah, they're in super IMAX. Cute. <laughs> you know, it's, it look like the movie works for what it is. It's, you know, it's, it's not too long. Uh, it is beautifully shot, you know, and it will do some great shots, you know, although I did think it was weird. They open up with this helicopter shot over the mountains in Antarctica, and I thought, well, this is something no penguin will ever see, uh, because penguins can't fly. Right. They certainly can't fly helicopters. Uh, or drones. Or drones. I think it was meant to sh provide a contrast to then getting onto the ground, yeah. and you see Steve waddling along. But that, that's a great long shot yeah. of, of, I mean, that's fully like, what, almost a minute long of that 
of 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 Steve, uh, wa- you know, waddling along. Um, they do get some beautiful footage, and look, there's moments of tension, like when that leopard seal is hunting, like, and you do see a leopard seal get some penguins. Yeah, you know, it 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 definitely shows you the circle of life. Um, yeah. and that's that's often the case with these films is that there are moments of right. just total brutality, but not so much that it cannot still maintain its G rating and right. be accessible to everybody. Yeah. You also have skewas, these, these um, birds, these predatory flying right. birds that like pick off baby chicks and also like just the eggs. They like go for the eggs themselves. Right. It's kind of gnarly. Um, there is not a lot of science in here and there's also not a lot of mention of global warming. And so one of the, you know, the major threats to these animals is just what's happening around them at all times. And the movie doesn't even begin to go into that. It really is trying to be accessible to the widest possible audience. And that means the youngest possible audience. Although Although, I think kids can handle knowledge of that sort of thing. Well, and, and look like on the scale of animals, as we've seen in things like planet earth, like the polar bears, for instance, and that recent show that's talking about the walruses, um, there's a recent show that's showing some pretty rough footage of climate change. You know, being that these, these particular penguins hatch on land, they're probably less at risk than say like emperor penguins who Mm, live on the ice. Right. Right. Um, you know, polar bears who live on the ice and as the ice is melting and, and, you know, we see over and over again, this footage of, you know, and pictures of polar bears that are that are woefully thin. So I think the polar bears in the north are having a tougher time. Here, That's a good point. Um, you know, and you see that there's hundreds of thousands of penguins. Like they're gonna be okay. Um, yeah. So this is uh, this is charming. There's a lot of cheesy '80s music in it, like a lot of really knowingly cheesy '80s music. Which again, like it's it's, it's corny. It's corny, but I smiled. Yeah, it's fun. Um, but again, the the visuals really are the star, and and so often they get these shots that make you wonder how did they get that shot. So make sure you stay through the credits because right. that's always the best part for me. Yeah. Is like the documentary of the documentary, and right. and, and the the lengths to which they go. I mean, at one point there is this um, this. Wind Windstorm with like hurricane force winds, like 150 mile an hour winds. Mm-hmm. And so you realize that if, if the penguins are having to withstand that and we're seeing it, then like the people are having right. to withstand that as well. And there's a lot of really beautiful underwater penguin swimming footage and you wonder how did they get that? So right. um, I would say stick around. Yeah, I was a little, little worried about the couple of camera people that were in that water. Oh my God. Like, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's not our job. No. It never will be, but it, there are some places in Antarctica that it, it would take like two weeks just to get to the spot on the ice where they needed to be to get the footage yeah. they wanted to get. So um, it's sort of awesome in that regard, the lengths to which they will go to tell the and story. And then you get to see how the penguins have zero fear of people, <laughs> right? I mean, that's the other thing is like, there's a couple of guys next to a, you see them, you know, just kind of readying their next shot as they're sitting next to a hole in the ice and just a penguin just pops right up and just starts checking them out, like just pops out of the water. Super cute. And, you know, the one guy points to the other one, you know, or like mentions to the guy with the camera, like, oh, look behind you. And he's like, oh, hey. <laughs> How's it yeah. going? So, yeah. So, again, there's no shortage of Penguin movies. March of the Penguins won an Oscar, what, 14 years ago. Right. And there have been various Happy Feet. And, um, but this is very the Penguins cute. Penguins of Madagascar. The Penguins of Madagascar. But this is the first Disney nature movie entirely in IMAX. So, if you can see it that way, you really should. And we did. And that was we pretty did. cool. Yeah. So, I'm saying 7.2. Uh, what did I say? 7.5? Yeah. So 7.4 is our number. It's at 89% on the tomato meter. And uh, I believe it's everywhere. I think it's out now. I think it came out on Wednesday. It's out in the world. So uh, go find it if you can. So, hey, thanks for watching us here on uh, YouTube. Like this video. Subscribe to our channel. Uh, Subscribe to our podcast and the places where podcasts live. Uh, Subscribe to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash bfastallday. And follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at bfastallday. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.